Hello and welcome to a new video about the Internet of Things. This time we want to fill our thing with data. Yeah? Last time we used the Thingworks platform to produce. We said we're producing. We add everything we need yeah? to be ready to store data in our properties, in our things, and retrieve data, retrieve data from our thing. Yeah? Today we are going to learn how this is working. Yeah? So, how is this working? Yeah? We are using so-called HTTP requests. Okay, Using so-called HTTP requests, this HTTP request, there are a, a number of them. Yeah? So there are a number of, of the requests. Uh, you can use several tools to do this. There is, for instance, there's a put request and a get request. And guess what? We're using the put request to put data to the thing and we're using the get request to get data from the thing. Sounds logical. Yeah, there are more, there are more requests, HTTP requests, hypertext transfer protocol. This I mean, it has a reason why you enter in your in your browser HTTP S usually colon double slash and then some URL. Yeah? Because with your browser you can make a GET request. Yeah? How to make a PUT request? Well, there are several tools out there. Yeah? for instance postman or something like this i'm going to use a tool an online tool it's called recbin you just have to enter recbin.com and then you can place your requests and this is exactly what you see here now yeah on the left hand side there's our thing works instance with our thing and so on yeah on the right hand side they are open already recbin okay what we want to do we want to do now a put request. Yeah? So here we can select the requests. You see there are some and I want to put, put, put. Yeah? And now where do we want to put it? We have to tell, yeah? we have to tell HTTPS colon double slash and we have to tell the server This is same, the same server where your Thingworks instance is running. And then we, we are accessing Thingworks. At this server, yeah, we are accessing the things. Yeah. Then we really, I will simply copy the thing name here. Oh, it's a good copy and paste. I'm a fan of copy and paste because then, then I cannot make a typo. And I want to request or I want to do the prop properties slash star from them yeah. here under raw we can have a look how this looks like yeah we put something to this to some properties in this thing yeah. well, sounds reasonable we have to do also a content yeah so do we have to, to tell what we are putting and this data is expected from, from thingworks in the form of a json json data format yeah. it looks like this open a bracket, close the bracket, and in between I can simply tell which, which uh, properties I want to f give the data. Huh? And I want to give the class then, because this is currently my only property. I said try the volume, try the level and so on. If you have already done, you can do it more. Huh? So class then, column, and then it's a warm drink, 22.1 degree. Yeah? This I want to have inside this value. This I want to put. Yeah? Good. Raw request looks like this. Yeah? I'm going to send this now. What is the result? 401, status 401. Every HTTP request gives back a status report. 401 is actually an error. Yeah. 401 means not authorized. This is not bad at all. Because first, this server is answering. Yeah. So we do have, we do have uh, an answer from the server. So we reach the server. This is good. And it tells us we are not authorized. This is actually also good. Because right now we are just somebody. The server doesn't know that we are the same person. Yeah? We, doesn't know. So 
It means not everybody can just post its value into our thing. That's good. And we also said we need to do so, we need the so-called application key. Yeah? We have to enter this into the so-called headers of the HTTP request. Yeah? So I will add here app key, yeah? a header app key, and I have to use the app key I have produced in this project. Yeah? And here is the app key for this project, application key. And there is a button, I can copy it. That's convenient. Control V here, and here we are. Yeah. Now, how does it look? Host server name, yeah. put to this thing, property, class stamp 22, and here is the application key. Now I should be able to post it. Yeah. Send. Status, oh, 200. 200 means 200 is okay, fulfilled. Yeah. Now I'm eager to know how this... Oh, 22 what one. Huh? No. He. I've just put data into my class temperature. Yeah, 22 that one. I will change this to 23. Hello. What is happening? Why I cannot... Ah, so, content. Here I have to enter. In raw format I cannot enter. Send. Huh? 200 should be okay. Refresh here. 23.1. Paha! So I can put data there. Okay. I can put data there. Okay. Now let's try a GET request. How is a GET request? A GET request, I don't need this here. Bug. Yeah? I don't need any content. Header, I need. Yeah? I need the application key. And I also do not need this star here. I just want to get all the properties. If I'm now sending this. Yeah? There is status 200, OK. And now, in raw format, here I have quite a list. Quite some information. Look at that. I can scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll. And scroll. Yeah. These things here, these are so-called HTML. This, this HTML language. Yeah. This is a website. Actually, this is a website. We got back a website. Yeah. This is how a website looks before the browser interprets it. Yeah? This is how it looks like. Yeah? I can even watch the content. You see, there is, it's now a little bit more, now this, all those, there are enters now. Yeah? There are new lines and carriage returns and so on put in. Yeah? This is actually a web page. Yeah? So what if I am placing this request here in a new, there it is, property listing for my thing, description, everything I need. Yeah? Because the browser also makes a GET request, it gets exactly the same thing. So here you can see how exactly this page here looks like before the browser has drawn it for us, interpreted this. Uh, hypertext markup language, HTML. This is actually how this looks like. Yeah? So, we get, and if we are interested in a certain property, yeah, not all properties, we can simply edit here, class temp, uh, send. Then the answer is much smaller. Uh, also, I can put this one into a new window back. It's just now class temp 23.1 degree. This is how this is working. Yeah? So we need to place HTTP requests. Okay? This, is, this is actually what is happening to put data or to get data from our things. Yeah, there you can also use uh, services, but it's a little bit more complicated. Yeah? This is standard. Well, this simply works out of the out of the box. Yeah? Put and get requests. Okay? Of course, we want to put it automatically. Yeah? 
we are all also using our Arduino for this. We used our Arduino to put live data to the MQTT server. Now we are using our Arduino to put live data to our thing. Yeah? And of course, since our Arduino cannot connect to Wi-Fi or something like this, we again have to use this little adapter plate. Yeah? How this is working and everything, we will see in next video. Yeah? Then we will see, okay, there is some, it's working pretty similar like the MQTT. Yeah? Actually, it's the same approach, but with a different, different program on the ESP. Yeah, I will explain it next time. I will explain it uh, next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.